Is Microsoft Places still alive? It's an app that some have been waiting for since Ignite 2022. People have been asking for it all throughout 2023. What's happening with it? There's nothing from Microsoft. There's nothing in the Microsoft 365 roadmap to do with Places. And there's nothing in Admin Center, Message Center, snappily named, either. So what's happened to Microsoft Places? Well, Microsoft just dropped in their wisdom another trailer six days ago at the time of recording if you're watching this in the future this is may 2024 so a couple of years on since they first announced places they've dropped a new video seems heavy into copilot now that copilot's obviously come out since they announced microsoft places they're touting some ai and stuff so we're just gonna have a quick look at that trailer see what's going on with microsoft places and see if you are interested in it coming out let me know in the comments below as you watch this video which bits you're most interested in and if you're eagerly anticipating places. So for those that don't know, Microsoft Places is basically trying to help hybrid organizations. So if you're working from home and then in the office, when you come into the office, now offices are largely dormant or vacated, trying to help people get in the office at the same time, looks like, but also, I guess, take over from some desk booking apps. So I guess if you, you can get away with a much smaller office than you used to these days with everyone working from home, how do you then make sure people have got a desk? In my old company, I guess in the sales force, we're kind of ahead of the game of hybrid working. Everyone used to go in the cafe, so you could go into a hot desk if you wanted to, but everyone used to go and work in the cafe and it's a nice little environment just to huddle together with probably people you've not seen for a while. So I think that's the best sort of uh, option. But if you do have like a formal desk and want some bigger desks and monitors and stuff, obviously you don't just want a bun fight of the first in, maybe you want to go and book it. So Microsoft Places essentially is a desk booking system. The benefit of it being in the Microsoft ecosystem is that obviously it's got everything else going on with it. So Outlook and Teams, which is where you're going to book most of your meetings. So if we scroll through this video, it looks like Microsoft Places is going to be a separate app, which kind of makes sense given some of the back end features, which I'll have a look at in a sec where you can see your office utilization. In this demo, it looks like it's going to pop up in Outlook, but I wouldn't be surprised if it also appears in Teams and maybe Teams first, even who knows. Presumably you have to upload a map of your site and office buildings and locations. In this one, it's like showing building four and who's working in building four now. I don't know who's going to be in your meetings, if they're in or not, don't know. And here's where you can see like the map. Presumably someone needs to upload that in the back end. From what I've seen from some of the room book, I'd be surprised if people have actually got nice pictures like this to populate with their uh, their office. But who knows, maybe, maybe it won't look as good as that. I've probably said it before and I'll say it again. Whenever Microsoft Marketing do their demo, they always have like a 3D sort of layer effect. I just think they should make that into their UI. It always looks way better than actually when it comes out. That would look pretty cool to me if it actually did that. But, uh, but anyway, scrolling on, then you can like see it saying that's an office required day. So presumably your manager, assuming it's gonna use the uh, hierarchy inferred in Azure AD or whatever it's called now, Entra ID. Someone will say you need to be in the office and then you can say whether you're gonna be in the office or not. Here it's like, using Copilot, say, you know, what days should I go in this week? And it's showing you who else is going to be in the office. And then it's got a prompt at the bottom saying, well, book rooms for this week's meetings. Then you can actually book conference rooms and things from places, which I guess is better than going into Outlook and booking a meeting room in the calendar, which I guess is what most organizations have to do now. And it's got some like things using AI, but it's got some like location aware features. So it's showing this in chat, which annoys me because Microsoft don't get the power of Microsoft Teams channels and seems to deprioritize Teams channels all the time. But I guess if you're the size of Microsoft, you end up using Teams chat. For most organizations, you'd be better off just using a large team and channels and just working just in the channel because people lose stuff in chat and don't understand the nuances of OneDrive and SharePoint. If you want to know more about that, that's what I do at work. I'm founder and director of MeTime. We help organizations get more out of Microsoft 365, be more efficient. And being honest, we happen to use Microsoft 365 just because people are using it. Pragmatically, it's the best thing to use for most organizations. But where that isn't the case, I'm not particularly affiliated with Microsoft. I don't sell Microsoft licenses and I recommend what is best 
for your organization. So if you're interested in finding out more about what you could do to work in a more modern way, book a call using the link in the description below or check out some other videos on YouTube for free. So it looks like they've got some location aware features. So in the chat, it says notify everyone or, or not. Chat is like WhatsApp where by default it notifies everyone anyway, but most people turn it off because it's just two interruptions. So then they made like all well, at everyone just to ping everyone again, which I think is just, just getting around, like just use Teams threaded conversations in Teams channels is the best thing you can use for most organizations. But that's just me. If they made an automatic tag that was at nearby to use in a Teams channel, that would be cool as well. But this is in a chat and you can use at nearby. Does anyone want to grab lunch? And it's saying, look, there's six other people in, in, in that chat that are in building three. Presumably if you go to the office, you would see people in there and just ask them to go to lunch. Uh, you know, why bother having human interactions when you can uh, when you can do a Teams chat? So then it's showing you when you run a meeting, it's quite useful because it's showing you who's in the building and who's not. So you know who's going to turn up to your meeting, which is good. It shows you where you're working from. So this lady's working in Kuala Lumpur, which sounds quite exotic. And then here's a bit of the back end. So that is pretty useful if you want to, you know, analyze your real estate, who's in the office, do we need to you know, can we can we afford to downsize at some point in the future? So it's showing you building attendance, room utilization, I guess which conference you, rooms are most popular. Um, so you can go and see if that's something to do with the tech or the location. And then some graphs about utilization over time. The room auto release policy also looks interesting as well. So it's auto released after 10 minutes of inactivity. But I guess you're going to need, it might, might be assuming some things that aren't true. So like maybe it's like 10 minutes of inactivity if you haven't signed in to a Microsoft Teams call, maybe. I don't know, but maybe sometimes you need to use a conference room just have an in-person meeting, you're not using the technology. So unless you've got like motion detectors or occupancy detectors in the room, I guess it could release your room without you. It's like, oh, you, like I'm in the meeting room. That could cause more confusion. So I guess that's obviously up to the people that are setting that policy. But that used to be a big issue in my corporate job where people would book rooms, not turn up. Then you'd go in the room and then like, oh no, we're just late. And oh, yeah, a bit of a faff. What would be even better than that is just changing the default meeting time from an hour to 50 minutes because it's not even when you book a meeting it's not even like 10 a.m till 11 till 11 till 10 59 if you go into it it's 10 till 11 someone else has booked 11 till 12 it's like you haven't even got like the minute to hope to, to get out of the room and in it's like the, the best thing so should do is just make a 45 minute meeting the default starts at 10 minutes past finishes at five minutes to or vice versa. And you've got like 15 minutes in between. People turn up early because they don't realize that it's set at 10 minutes past. I used to do this manually, being a bit anal. And uh, everyone was like, oh my gosh, the meeting's finished on time. Meeting's starting on time, meeting's finished on time, and we've got time to get to our next meeting. It's like unheard of. So if Microsoft just did that, maybe they would get away from uh, some of the things in places. Nice snazzy marketing video. Who knows when it's gonna come out? It doesn't actually say. Microsoft have turned off the comments of that video, so you can't even ask, like, when is it coming out? We've not heard anything for two years. What's happening with it? The video below is coming in 2023, and it's 2024. So I'm hoping it comes out. It looks pretty cool. I guess it would get people away from using third-party desk booking apps. It's going to be integrated into Microsoft. So let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button and the bell icon because we've got new videos coming out at least every week on Microsoft at work if you're interested in that. And if you want to get better at Microsoft 365 yourselves, consider joining the channel. You either get priority access to any questions asked in the comments, priority access to see new videos before they come out for everyone else, or full courses that previously sold a much higher price for a low monthly fee as well as live q a with me once a week if i'm available consider joining the channel using the join button below this video and if you need help for your entire organization like you say then consider booking a call using the link in the description below where usually it's easier to come in see how your organization is working together and recommend some ways that you could work better and then you can either can implement that yourself or get some other help to implement it but thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next one